Okay, let's go back to our top story, the fighting in Solidar in eastern Ukraine. We're going to speak to Charles Stratford, who's live outside the city of Bakhmut in the Donbass region. So more fighting in a part of the country which is strategically important. Charlie, what's been happening? Well, you join us, Rob. We're about five kilometres outside of Bakhmut. Solidar is around 10 kilometres in that direction. I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to pick this audio up, but there's a lot of heavy shelling going on all around this area. We've, um, in the last few minutes as well, heard heavy machine gun fire. There's a checkpoint very close to us as well. We were prevented from going any further towards Bakhmut at that checkpoint. It seems as if they're only allowing the military through. I was here, what, two and a half, three months ago, and it's fair to say that the situation has dramatically changed since then. I mean, we used to go down this road and into Bakhmut then. It is a lot louder, a lot more heavy shelling than then. We've actually been speaking to soldiers this morning who've been inside Bakhmut and asking them about the situation in Bakhmut and Solidar. They said to us that Russian forces were in the centre of Solidar. They said that they were in control of that salt mine. They described uh, Russian tanks in the centre of Solidar as well. They said that there were concerns probably hear those thuds there. There are concerns among the Ukrainian forces about possible escape routes for the Ukrainian forces inside Solidar. He said what they were trying to do was protect a western route out of the town. We've been speaking to some of the soldiers behind us here. I, I'm not sure this, in this vehicle, these people have been getting ready to evacuate soldiers out of Bakhmut. They say that um, there are still a lot of civilians inside Bakhmut. We asked how many civilians there were inside Solidar. He estimated around 500 civilians still inside Solidar as the fighting goes on. And what's interesting, of course, the big question is, is why has this happened seemingly so suddenly, this big push towards Solidar? Well, the soldiers that we spoke to said, and with respect to Bakhmut, this intensification of fighting, he said it was literally because of the sheer numbers of Russian forces that in recent weeks have been amassing on um, the areas north of Solidar and various areas around Bakhmut. He said that there were Russian forces fighting inside the city of Bakhmut. He was hesitant to give us exactly where that front line was for security reasons. But there is a river that runs right the way through Bakhmut. And he said that the Russian forces had not crossed that river. But as I say, the situation here, incredibly tense. Um, and it was only, I suppose, about sort of 10, 15 minutes ago where we saw what we believe was an air defence system firing missiles of, of what we understand were, 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 were Russian missiles or potentially Russian aircraft um, down towards Konstantinivka. Now, that town, I suppose, is about 10 kilometres in that direction. So, yeah, one can only imagine the horrific situation for civilians trapped inside Bakhmut or refusing to leave Bakhmut and those 500 or so that we've been told are still in Solidar. Charles Stratford talking to us outside the city of Bakhmut in Donbass. Charles, thank you very much. Well, Wagner mercenaries have been at the forefront of the battle in this part of eastern Ukraine. Hada Abdelhamid takes a closer look at the group and its role in the war. It's a small mining town, but one that could represent the first military breakthrough for Russia in months. But at the forefront of the battle is the Wagner Group, a private military army financed and equipped by the Russian government. Its leader is Yevgeny Prigozhin, a former convict and close ally of President Vladimir Putin. He was recently seen in the salt mines of Solidar. Well, uh, this is Yevgeny Prigozhin's flagship military mission. It's in Bakhmut and Solidar. And Yevgeny Prigozhin is locked currently in a shadow war against the Russian defense minister. His telegram channels are discrediting Sergei Shoigu. He's also clashing with uh, regional governors like the St. Petersburg governor, Alexander Begloff. And he's rumored to have political aspirations of his own. Private military armies are unconstitutional in Russia, but the Wagner Group has grown to become an informal and unofficial unit of the regular Russian army. The Wagner Group first appeared during the annexation of Crimea in 2014. In 2015, about 300 fighters were sent to the Donbass to support the Russian-backed separatists. The group has also operated in places like Syria, Central African Republic, 
Libya and Mali, among others. Initially, about 300 Wagner contractors took part in the invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Their mission, according to Ukraine and Western officials, capture and kill President Vladimir Zelensky. By March, their presence had tripled to 1,000. And the Pentagon currently estimates there are at least 50,000 fighters operating in eastern Ukraine, of which only 10,000 are contractors, the remaining 40,000 are convicts. Russia initially called the invasion a special military operation that would quickly achieve the Kremlin's goals. But it stalled and Russia had to rethink its military strategy. That's when the role of this private army became more prominent in eastern Ukraine with the support of the regular army. How would uh, they cooperate? Uh, they usually uh, have some kind of uh, uh, division of uh, responsibility. Uh, Russian regular army usually control artillery, rocket missiles, uh, and uh, aviation. And uh, uh, this Wagner group uh, uh, used uh, uh, special uh, units of soldiers and officers for the storming of some of the uh, defense uh, points of uh, uh, Ukrainian army. The group also enjoys a legal loophole which allows its mercenaries to operate more freely. They are glorified in a recently released movie funded by the group called The Best in Hell, even though the Wagner Group has been accused of human rights abuses in several countries it operates in. If Solidar falls, it will pave the way for the Russian army to head south towards Bakhmut and west towards Kramatorsk. It will also likely increase the popularity of the Wagner Group among Russians, further blurring the lines between the private and regular armies. Hamid, Al Jazeera.